I was recently on holidays with my girlfriend and I was watching 1408. Originally, I think it's just a meme. But then when I was re-watching it and I was a little older, I realised this one really slipped under the radar. This is a deep movie. And also it's just the fact that it's a John... John Kasich? Jo no, John Cusack. John Cusack and Samuel L. Jackson. What's not to like? Samuel L. Jackson, the poor man Sidney Poitier, and John Cusack, the poor man's... You know, the guy from House of Cards. <laughs> But I love those guys. I honestly like them more than their better versions. Because I'm a good person and I hate Kevin Spacey. Guy, like the video if you agree that I got my validation point. But re-watching it, went into the little tunnel that everybody goes afterwards where they go, Oh, that was better than I thought. They better just YouTube this. What did other people think about it? And then you just go to those classic wanky video essays. But there was one guy, and I wish I could remember his name because I actually do think that it was a good summation of it. But he was just talking about really what it is is just a parable or a metaphor for the seven deadly sins. Oh, well, actually, Dante's Inferno, so I think it was nine sins or whatever. But we were looking into the seven deadly sins afterwards, and you know what? It finally struck me. I talk about it all the time on the podcast. We've got a guy called Doom Kang, and he was an extremely intelligent extremely funny, very original thinker, the most original thinker I've ever met in my life. Uh, it was a real shame that that man did not make something of himself. Uh, I am going to say, and no, this is going to get a lot of blowback and people go going, like, you think you tell it have their place? Yeah, they do have their place, but you know what they don't have their place with if you take 50 in a day? Well, I don't know how many he took. Maybe he took five or whatever, but that man went from <laughs> into a trip that he has never left. And it completely tarnished him. I wasn't making this a don't do drugs video, but here we are, aren't we? What a journey, hmm? Yes, that's very LSG related. And he did that in university. That was the experimenting age. I guess it's the time and a place and it's called College South Park phrase that was used a little too literally. And I don't think there's ever a time for that much drugs, but something happened to his mind. It's never been the same since. And he just went further and further into a spiral of evil. And watching 1408, and I know that there's a lot of Christian propaganda when it comes to Hollywood, but it doesn't make it true. That's the best propaganda, the one that has a kernel of truth to it. And I do think that there is a kernel of truth to this. I would just like to summarise all my thoughts on Christianity that I've kind of hinted towards. I think that first off, it was just one of the first self-help books ever written. There was like Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, which is great as well. But... Christianity was one of those first guide principles that was, I guess, mass published. <laughs> the original 12 rules for life. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and look at how much reverence and respect he has for it. And I think that that's the problem. I really hated that era. I guess it was like early 2000s. Your Christopher Hitchens, your Richard Dawkins, just spoiling it for everybody, saying Santa Claus doesn't exist in such a smug way. And you could just look at them. I don't know so much about Richard Dawkins, but definitely Christopher Hitchens, and it was always just like, yeah, but you're a cunt. Did you ever think about that? This is something, and look, obviously I would regard myself as an atheist. I don't even like having those discussions. I don't like thinking about God. I just think it's just one of those superfluous things. It's like, when are robots going to take over? Well, when they do, you won't be able to do anything about it. So in the meantime, do some push-ups. But... Uh, yeah. There was always something in the back of my head when I was watching that and I was thinking, yeah, but on average, the Christians that I know are much better than the smug atheists that sit there going, oh, well, there is no God, and therefore it's perfectly fine for me to snort this cocaine off a man's ass. Mm. Like, I think... The Christianity, if you, if you brush it back, there is a lot of very sage advice in it for how to live a good life. For instance, I think that this is one of the truest things that's ever been written. It's all, often misquoted, but money is the root of all evil. Apparently in the Bible, and you know, if somebody who's giving it a lot of props, I've never read it, but I know little quotes from it, just from self-help, right? But actually, apparently it was supposed to be the love of money is the root of all evil. I really don't think that there is anything truer than that. 
yes, obviously money is a necessity in life, but if money is your end goal, to get as much money as possible, what do you do? You become a stockbroker, you become a banker, and then you just start commodifying things like water. There are huge, huge, I don't even know the word because I don't know anything about it. I've got no religious training whatsoever, but parables, what are the fuck they're called? Paragraphs in the Bible. I remember another one was, in the end times, how epic is this thought? In the end times, there is going to be a currency that is based off of souls. Isn't that a horrifying thought? It, it would have to be the most epic and horrifying thought of all time. Think of something else. Put it in the comments, actually. I, I really like that when there's just another one that I'm always going on about, and that's why I always use the voice, but, you know, like, Rome, total war. It's a very epic thought that there is nothing else but war. <laughs> that's all there is. Instead of kindergarten, war. Instead of rubber duckies, bombs shaped like rubber duckies, war. But... The thought that souls are just getting traded around as a currency just before the world <laughs> descends into hell. And I do think that that is something that really does happen. I think that a lot of the Bible, from the readings that I'm getting, is just talking about the evils of greed. And it just, it, it peeled them back with the seven deadly sins. Now, let's test my memory. Gluttony, greed, lust, um, uh, wrath, uh, uh, the, the other two, <laughs> probably should have done a little refresher before pressing record. I'm not going to do another take. Make sure that you sign up to Patreon. They're maybe there. I might name all seven of them. That's worth money. Um, oh, yeah, pride and envy. Pride and envy. Those are the other two. You know what's really interesting? You can go through life, and I really think that this is just another helpful identifier, like why him, why her. Uh, highly recommend that you read that book. In fact, Neil from Neil and Jordan, the podcast, that's what he's most famous for, not Australia in two minutes. He just recently read it, just said to me, life-changing. Highly recommend it. Why him, why her? Better than the Bible. <laughs> so sacred. No, but I honestly do think that there is a lot of wisdom in it from all of these quotes that you read. I think that's just a huge, huge part of it is just like, don't make money your God. Isn't that incredible? It's such a good message. Um, but yeah, just on average, the average Christian that I've met is just a much better human being than the atheist. It's not always the case, but it's just because they have some kind of groundedness in, in like a, you know, like an imposed morality or something. It's just like th there's something there that's just saying you shouldn't be doing these things, you should be doing these things, instead of just, yay, free for all, you're born now, do what you like. Isn't that just a recipe for, as Jordan Peterson always says, that if you don't work on yourself, you're going to be a mildly bad person. Becoming a very bad person requires work. Most people are just mildly bad. And I do think that. Most people that I meet in life, I'm just like, oh, you're a shit cunt. I don't, why did I need to know that you existed? There's a million of you. Don't you think that that's a really common person? Just somebody that you're just like, you're a waste of time. You're a waste of resources. Do something with your life. I think that that's something that they're getting to there, right? But I think that another way of looking at it is that what is your primary sin? Sorry, I'll loop back to, before I get into that, I'll, I'll, I'll go to that in a second, but I just wanted to finish that point with the Dome King. I never really understood uh, what was attractive to people about the Bible or the Quran or the Torah. I just didn't grow up in that kind of family. And in fact, grew up in a family where the predominant thought was always because my mum went to a Catholic school but the Catholic boarding school was really strict so she was just like they're so evil they're the real devils but um, when I was watching 1408 I just kept thinking about it like fuck in another world in another world the character that John Cusack is playing which let's be honest is every character that Stephen King has ever made his main character He's not a judge. I think he's an excellent writer. And I'm very happy with that writer always being some guy from middle America that's going through a rough patch in his writing. And he used to be addicted to cigarettes, but not anymore. But he still carries one around. And then at the end of the book, it always comes into use. It's awesome. 
I'm a big fan of that character. And also usually just a nice healthy dose of, I don't believe in God. But, um, yes, th that guy reminded me a lot of Dome King. And then watching his descent, his soul getting purified as he's just trapped in that room and then the room just kept going into another layer of his personal hell. It finally clicked. It finally clicked why there is a lot of convicts and a lot of sinners that turn to the Bible. And you know what it is? I used to always think they're turning to the Bible, say that they're a... Uh, crim because they're wanting to give off an impression for their parole. Maybe that's a bit of the case, but I also think that it's... I think after a while your sin starts to catch up on you. And you start judging yourself in a lot of instances. You, you, if you ever watch a lot of documentaries with a lot of criminals, yes, there's that, there's that basket of person that says, I never did anything wrong, I'm completely innocent. Your classic sociopath, right? But then there's that other basket of people that are in prison and they think, I, I wish that I didn't fall into that crowd. Uh, I, I've done a lot of horrible things that I regret. Now, I don't know what Dome Kang ever said, but he, he had, after he had that stint uh, in university, he was not the same person. He was a drug-fucked man, but he was also a much, much heavier man. He had the aura of a sinner. And I think that he recognised that. He, he himself thought that he was a bad person. I don't know what he did. No idea. And I don't even know if this is true. This is just my interpretation of it. And now it makes total sense to me why he got obsessed with Christianity. As in, he used to have whiteboard markers. I remember one time I walked in, it was horrifying. I didn't see him in two weeks. And his, his mum said to me, thank God you're here. Uh, like, you, you know, he's gone nuts. Walked into his room. He's a hermit. He's got a beard out like this. He's got five whiteboards in the room where he's just writing. Is the word parables? Whatever, right? He's just writing things from the Bible everywhere. And I just always used to think, this is the drugs. He's gone insane. But now I just know. I think it's the other way around. I think that he's purifying his soul. I think that that's what's happening when people turn to Christianity. And you know why they do that? Because in this society, as it currently is, I really think that we're at that period that ancient Rome was in. We're in the decline. And as a result of the decline, I think that the decline comes when sin is rewarded, sin is glorified. Don't you think that those of the seven deadly sins, I was just looking around, just at advertising, just at every, like, what, like think about it, like lust, how much is lust encouraged in this society? Greed. Greed is definitely encouraged. Think about what banks get away with. Gluttony. Gluttony's, um, you know. I, the other thing that I found out about gluttony, it's not necessarily to do with food. It's also to do with, uh, you know, like over drinking, consumption of expensive goods, drugs. All of that falls into gr gluttony. Don't you, think, don't you think our generation specifically is always trying to make a virtue out of that shit? Um, pride, so much narcissism in our society. Wrath, I don't know if wrath actually is, but then I'll just get back to that. Um, and the others. <laughs> but I think that just like in ancient Rome, how the thing that has become not exactly the technical answer for it, but I guess the spiritual answer for why the Roman Empire fell was because it just became a sinful nation. It just became a place of overconsumption and greed. And as a result of that, eventually it started to collapse in on itself. Now, there's much more nuanced points as to why, as in there was like a change of environment. I think that there was just like a green period up in Asia, which made the population explode more. The barbarians, after just like going in and out of the borders, they started copying the Roman tactics and the armor and whatnot. There was all that kind of stuff. But I think that there's definitely merit to that. The phrase that we were talking about before, that it was just like, you know, bad times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men create bad times. It's the circle of society, isn't it? Anyway, in our society, I think that it's, if you just go along with the narrative, you are forced, not forced, coerced, coerced, encouraged to sin, 
aren't you? You're encouraged to consume. It is a consumerist society. And just by doing that, if, you, if that just becomes your god, you know, like you just think that, uh, the, the, you know, all of your needs are going to be met when you're just buying heaps of Louis Vuitton and whatever. Just, just really crass. <laughs> it's turning very, uh, Friday after school. Hey kids, did you know God's lit? But I never really understood the appeal of it. I was always just like, yeah, it's just outdated self-help. But you know what the appeal is? And uh, even when it came to Jordan Peterson, I was always just ignoring that because it wasn't resonating with me personally. But that's what he's always saying about his particular brand of self-help. There's something biblical about it. And that is, all other self-help, if you read it, you just go into the bookshelves, it's got that same thing. It's, it's good, it works, I've got nothing wrong to say against it, but it's just like, even Tony Robbins, right? It's a product of the 80s, it's a product of greed is good. There's something very stoic, there's something simple, there's something soul cleansing about what the Bible is teaching. Which is just like, those seven deadly sins, avoid them. Recognize those in yourself, they lead to nothing but damage. But I think that that's the whole thing, it's just like, all of these sinners, these people that recognize that they're sin and they, and they turn to God as a result. I don't think, I think it's like, for the first time there is kind of literature in the world that is saying to them, this is why you feel bad. This is what you did wrong. Those are my thoughts on it anyway. I don't know, I'm a bit emotional about this one because he was my childhood friend. And I really do think that he was an exceptionally intelligent man. And he's kind of just a husk of who he used to be. And I think that that's something else that happens as well. On the converse flip side, I hear this all the time, that when somebody does turn to God, they kind of just do become an empty husk of a person. But another way of saying that, I guess, is that it kind of crushes your ego. Anyway, that's what was happening in 1408. And it finally just kind of clicked, I guess because that's just what a good movie does, right? It, it explains a phenomenon. And obviously because it's the US and it's Hollywood, there's a lot of Christian propaganda that's just put into it, right? But, um, I don't think that it makes it any less true. It was for the first time that I actually saw it from his perspective. And the more that I just started reading into what the sins actually are, again, this is all completely new to me. And it's just, it's a new field of self-help. There's never a field of self-help really. It's always just kind of giving you the carrot. It's never giving you the stick. And I think that that's why everybody always just turns away from it now. It's just like, this is stupid, it's barbaric and stuff. But it, 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 it was a much more brutal society back then. So they needed this stick. And I think that some people need this stick now. But I think that there's still definitely things to learn from it. Because we were just going through the sins, right? My girlfriend and I, we were going through all of our friends. I won't use my other friends, but I will use my girlfriend. What do you think her sin is now? It always has been, but that, that is her sin. The thing that motivates her in life, pride. Definitely pride. She has excessive pride in herself. Now she is not a bad person by any stretch of the imagination, but that sin animates her. The, the need and the yearning to be special. Now she has harnessed that in a positive way throughout her life. That's what I'm saying here. That I think that there is just one of those seven sins that if you can look at them, you should identify it in yourself and see how you're utilizing it. Because you know what mine is. You probably do if you've read, if you've been on this channel enough, or even if you've just been on Friendly Geordies. Wrath. I'm a very vengeful person. You know who else is clearly, obviously, if you read his book, Kevin Rudd. But it doesn't mean, and you know, Paul Keating. What's his obviously? Pride. What's Bob Hawke's? Last. You know who I don't, don't think has any. And, let, and again, let me know in the comments. But John Howard. What is his sin? What is his primary sin? But, yeah, with me, for instance, that was always the thing that was animating me. And it's really interesting just to trace that back to your family and how that was sort of encouraged. So uh, in my girlfriend's family, Vietnamese, and she was the firstborn. And the firstborn in those societies is always just propped up so much. The, the middle child syndrome thing is real. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she 
was constantly propped up as you are very special going to do amazing things she's going to do low and then she did that and now what is it she's becoming an actor and unlike most asian families were like huh their other job their doctor and lawyer they're sitting there being like oh my girlfriend my daughter very special very special she doing good in acting and now she is it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy but that obviously that sin and it was kind of subconscious i suppose but it was being propped into her and I think that as a result of that, like, she, she is harnessing it in a way that can be used for good. But then there's other people that obviously would be using the sin for bad, right? If they just never really developed any morality. And I think that that's another thing. She comes from a Christian household and she, she's just a much nicer person. I'm sorry, but she is. But if she didn't have that grounding in morality... And there was just somebody there just been like, you're a star, you go, honey. What do you turn into? You turn into something like Kim Kardashian, don't you? Uh, when it comes to me, wrath. I grew up in a very volatile house. Uh, my mother and I just don't get on at all. And so there was just constant conflict, constant turmoil. And I think as a result of that, the thing that has always motivated me in life, and you can even see it in a previous video that I just filmed, when I'm talking about people with nepotism, I'm always just like, oh, fucking show them, fuck you. And you know what it was? It was just they were denying me what I wanted, but that was the juice. That was what motivated me. It wasn't so much, I'm special, I'm gonna prove to the world that I'm special, la 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 la, like Malcolm Turnbull would be, I suppose. No, it was more that like Kevin Rudd thing of just like, this is what really motivated You can see it. You can see it in how much of my soul is put into a, uh, a video like obviously because it's just you know it's got my name in it and it's about me and obviously we'll have a lot more of it but just just the flavor of it the flavor of uh you know the, the how how that is being morphed but you know something like the video how to solve a problem like friendly geordies right it's so vindictive it's just it's an hour of wrath <laughs> That's what motivates me in life. It's always this thing, if somebody criticizes me, I think that I can do deal with it well if the person, I respect the person that is saying that to me. But if I don't respect the person, I'm just like so vengeful about it. It's more just this thing of, no, you don't deserve your fucking position in life. You're terrible. You suck. I'm gonna show you how much you suck. That's what makes me move up in life. Now, I think that it's like, if yours is like, say, slothfulness, for instance, which is laziness, I really don't know how you can use that to your advantage. But it is something that you should at least identify in yourself. What are those seven sins? Because I just think that there is, there's wisdom to it. There's something that you can, we were doing it with all of our friends, and like, you know this from just this channel. Like, I'm obsessed with those, like, what's your personality type? What's your star sign? I like doing this. So just humor me on this one, will you? Just write down the seven deadly sins. See which ones of those are in your personality inherently. Because I just think it's another one of those Delphic Oracle moments of know thyself. What are the things that are motivating you in life? And as I'm always saying, how you marry the dark side of yourself to the light side. You should be utilizing that. You should be utilizing it in a good, productive way. You know, exercising your demons in a good way. Another example of that is Miss Love's dad is a brilliant artist, but you look at all of his art. He's the happiest man I've ever met in my life. I always refer to him as just like a pixie that looks like a shriveled testicle. But you look at all of his art, it's so bleak. It's so Soviet. It's always just a shot of like someone ripping his own rib cage open. It's that kind of stuff. It's very, it's very renaissance like ah, some guy in hell. But he's obviously exercising his demons through that. And I just want you to go through those things. Anyway, if you want more reminders like this, you know where to go. Jordan Shanks, link in the description. Two bucks a gander will get you further in life because you'll have more of these reminders. All right? And that is what I call a really original sales pitch. Never said that before, have I? Like this video, subscribe, give me more ideas. Thank you very much.